Okay, everybody, Dubby here with another Stratego game analysis. In this game, we're going to uh, play a mediocre player. Uh, he, he played, I think, over 2,000 games, but he was still under 500. So we'll see why he's probably still under 500 after playing so many games. And in this game, I decided to use statistics to a lotto a piece with a high piece and we'll see that coming up and I'll explain why it was a highly calculated risk instead of just like a random lotto so let's get started with the game uh, you shouldn't do this I when I started my uh, setup I moved pieces all around I think my flag started here and I moved it down here, but I moved pieces all around. This was an old game when I first started playing with the flag up top. And somehow a miner got stuck up here and I forgot to move it. So I'm stuck with it. But you don't want to have miners on the front row. That's usually uh, not good. You want to save your miners, especially when you start playing better players. You're going to need them at the end of the game. So don't do this. <laughs> That's bad. All right. So let's get going. And I probably was mad right here saying, oh, no, <laughs> I have a miner here. So at least I hope to get a, I'd like to get a scout. That would be nice. So I would have lost if I would have had my flag up there. So that was good. Good. I switched. I think I probably lost three or four games in a row. And then usually when I do that, I switch just to get back on the on the winning ways. It sucks when you get scouted over and over and over again. So I'm just looking for targets to attack. So my opponent did the same thing. He had a miner on the front row. You don't want to do that. So that might help explain why he's 500 after, or below 500 after 2,000 games. So you don't want to waste your miners. But he did get a scout, so at least he got that. But, you know... You want more from your miner than just a scout. So notice this, this is, uh, tells you a lot here, but they move. So you're gonna attack me with this piece or this piece. Probably not this piece, but uh, well, it did come from behind the leg, so this could be a high piece. But usually, when I come up, uh, and if I don't get attacked, I usually go behind the leg. You always like to know what what's behind these uh, four pieces on each side of the leg. That's usually va valuable real estate, and it usually has lots of high pieces in the spy. So I got a scout, scout too, and we found some good information. We found the general, so that's great. And now this is what they call a major, major, major blunder. This is stratego malpractice. You never really want to do this. Um, his marshal was unknown. My miner, if he was paying attention, he just he just hit it with a scout. Was known. You never want to reveal your marshal to a known miner. Uh, this is this is just terrible, terrible play. Most 
uh, well, quite a lot of uh, top players. Uh, well, not even in, in the beginning of the game. They won't reveal their marshal unless they get a general or a colonel. That's how, you know, how they, uh, they really want to keep their uh, marshal hidden and keep it a secret as long as possible. Because when you keep your marshal hidden, every piece can, can uh, bluff as a marshal. And so that's very valuable. That allows you come in, come into your opponent's territory, and do some great scouting. You can get in deep in your, deep into their territory, because they're afraid it might be the marshal, and then they might waste scouting pieces on maybe a sergeant or a lieutenant. So this is very bad because now this player has to play defense. His marshal is known. His general is known, and. That's probably why he's a below 500 player, because when you do that, you allow your opponent to dictate the, the play. I can come up here, and he has to play defense, and then I can come this way, and he has to run over here and play defense, and he's running back and forth, and, and you just keep on trying to find targets now that uh, you can capture with your general and colonel and maybe even your marshal. So it's going to be very difficult for this player to win the game now he, he's in he's in deep deep trouble so don't reveal and this piece probably could have captured the, the miner so why not use this piece uh so that was really a terrible mistake on his part so don't do that keep your marshal hidden as long as possible so now i'm just going to start looking for targets for my general and colonels to hit since we know where the general and marshal is now this is going to come into play here. I talked about bomb allocation uh, in several videos in the past, and I analyzed almost 85,000 uh, game setups, and I figured out where all the uh, where the bomb allocations were on each row. And on the back row here, this back row, a player usually puts about 2.4 bombs on the back row on average. On the second row here from the bottom, they usually put just slightly less than two bombs on this row. On the third row here, where this bomb is located, it's slightly less than one bomb. It's like 0.96 or whatever. So usually when you play someone, they have at least maybe one bomb on average. And on the top row, I used to say it was a half a bomb, but it's, it's two-thirds of a bomb. So if you play three games, the odds are in at least uh, two of the games, you're going to see two bombs in those three games. Or in one of the games, you, you'll see at least two bombs. So, so it's two-thirds, around one, around two, and this is 2.4. So this is going to come into play. Uh, when I lotto here. So now this is kind of unusual. I have my spy over here. You really don't want to do this. Uh, it's, it's the common spots for spy are these spots, this spot here, these two, and this spot here. It's like the spy smile right here. And the general is usually here, 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 or here. So, but when you have a spy over here, it makes it difficult if, if your opponent marshal blitzes or lottos with his marshal over here. Then you have to know how to play defense and you have to have a good bomb defense to stop them because otherwise you can be in a lot of trouble. It's usually better to have your spy fairly centralized. And a lot of people keep it behind the lake on the inside so they don't get scouted on one move. They have to go down and over. So, But now I'm trying to draw the marshal this way, so maybe I can catch him off guard. Because I bet you in the 2,000 games or so he's played, he probably saw a spy on the side maybe only a handful of times. Usually you see that with platinum players, maybe, and some gold level players. But most of the time the spy is fairly centralized, and, and that makes sense. So you can see he has to run back and forth because 
he has to worry about a general counterattack. So now I'm finding targets. I found a lieutenant. We know the general. I'm hoping my colonel gets scouted so I can draw the marshal down. The colonel will be bait. Okay, so we found a second lieutenant. Not great, but better than nothing. This is not a great setup. If he was a Marshal Blitzer or a Lottower, I'd be in a lot of trouble. So this is really good. We found a Colonel here. So now with a General here and a Colonel here, you can assume that this is probably a spy. That's the standard uh, defense formation. You have the General, Colonel, and Spy. Now most of the time players, when they want to attack this, they usually want to get their General up here and try to get the colonel. And this player on defense has to scout the general coming up because otherwise it has to make a 50-50 guess if this piece is the marshal or the general. It might be a bluff piece too, but usually it's either the marshal or the general. And if the player guesses wrong, they either lose their general or they lose their colonel. And then they probably lose the game. So that can be very tricky. And I think most players come up with the general to attack, uh, but not always. So you can't assume all the time when a piece comes right here, and if you don't scout it, it might be the marshal just sitting here, and then you scout it, and then you wind up uh, losing your general and probably losing the game. So I'd like to get this colonel with my general. That's what I want to do. This is probably a garbage piece on the front row. But I want my colonel to be revealed. I want the marshal to come over here and maybe take my colonel. So that wasn't that bad. It was a lieutenant. There's a lot of lieutenants on the front row. Now, I was hoping to get my general over in this column to get up here before he possibly scouts me. So now we're moving down here. See if the marshal will go for the, uh, the trap. I move out of the way like I'm stuck. And he thinks better of it. So he's been around the block. You know, he's played 2,000 games, so... Now this this really made me mad, but that's you know that happens early in the game. Maybe I should have come up with a bluff piece first. But when he moved this piece here, you know, then I couldn't trap it, so it was already uh, my plan was already thwarted when he went up and over. So now I decided to come up here. Sometimes you just want to come up and put pressure on your opponent, and you know, especially beginners, you just put pressure on, on them with some high pieces in their in their territory, and they'll make a stupid mistake. 
there. I try to come up here. And I won't get him in, with the two square rule because he'll move this piece forward and we'll, we'll go back and forth. And I'll show you the error message you get with the two square rule. But I knew I wasn't going to get him. But I knew I wasn't going to get the kernel when he moved this piece here. Because I'd go here and then he'd know what it is. So we just want to put pressure and see what he does. So that was a good move. So... He's on the diagonal, so he's safe. We're both at two. Now I'm at three. And now he's going to go up here at three. And now I cannot go here anymore. I have to go either here, here, or here. Because of the two square rule, I can't go here. The two square rule is very simple. You can only go uh, between two spaces. You can only go back and forth three times on three consecutive terms. Of turns so one two three and then I can't go back for four so we'll see the error message here you cannot keep moving so when you see that that's the two square rule saying you screwed up so now now I decide I was kind of mad because I wanted a kernel but since I knew the person, uh, the person's where his marshal was, where his colonel was, where his general was, I think this was a lieutenant, this was a lieutenant, this was a spy, I think, and this was a bomb. Since I knew there was a bomb on this row and a bomb allocation on this row, it on average is one bomb, I decided I'm going to target this piece here. Now I know from the stats from the bomb stats that this spot is the least likely spot to have a bomb on this row from uh, analyzing almost 85,000 game setups. The odds are around a little, little less than 97 or 93%. It's like 7% chance you're going to, a little over 7% chance you're going to hit a bomb. But since I found a bomb on this row, I'm thinking the odds are much, much lower now. Maybe it's only 2% chance to find a bomb, or 1% chance to find the bomb, since we already found a bomb on this row. So, and since this is a good spot behind the lake, uh, you usually can find colonels, uh, majors, and captains here. So I decided to attack this spot. And I decided to go with the odds. When the odds are in your favor, maybe 98, 97%, uh, I think it's worth doing. And even if this is a bomb, then I'll know two bombs. And I still know his marshal, general, colonel, and spy, and plus some other pieces. So all that information is worth a general, even if I lose a general. If, you know, I would trade a general for all that information at the start of the game. So I decide to hit this piece. Now some people might say this is lotto. I think this is just a highly calculated risk using statistics and you know the odds are overwhelmingly in my favor so let's see what we get and we get a colonel so that is that is just devastating for my opponent now my opponent he's gonna move his marshal will get in a second I'm just okay here so he moves his marshal to here. It's my turn again. You can make the same case for me attacking this piece here. I think this was like around a little over 7% chance of a bomb. This is a little over 9%. It's a little bit higher. People more likely to have their bombs on the outside lakes on these two spots than on the inside. So, But I could make the same case here. Since I found a bomb here, the, the odds are much lower than 9% that this is a bomb. Also, a lot of times players don't tend to have uh, horizontal bombs, double horizontal bombs, because they like to space them out. You know, if they have their flag bombed in with three bombs, they only have three bombs. And if you put two next to one another, you know, that can uh, be hard to, uh, to have a good defensive setup. So a lot of players don't do that. It's it's not that uh, common. So I could almost lotto this too. 
and you know the odds are overwhelmingly in my favor so it's really not a lotto but since I have his colonel and I have an overwhelming lead now I have his colonel I know his marshal his general probably the spy the other colonel here and this I think was a lieutenant and this was a lieutenant so it, it's not worth me taking this piece now that I have an overwhelming lead the other reason I didn't want to take this piece is because I'm going to test my opponent's uh, knowledge of the game here. I'm going to make a move, and my opponent is forced to make a specific move, and if he doesn't make a specific move, he's probably going to lose the game. So what move will I make? You can stop the video, pause it for a minute or two. What move am I going to make that will force my opponent to make a only one correct move and if he doesn't make the correct move he's probably going to lose the game so see if you can figure it out okay the move I'm going to do is I'm going to take my general and I'm going to move it to this spot here and the reason I'm going to move it here is I'm going to test my opponent's ability if he knows the two square rule now, most players do very well understanding the two-square rule when it comes north-south. When it comes in these columns north-south, they can see the two-square rule and understand it. But a lot of times, they don't see it going east-west or west-east. It's a little bit harder. And they play too fast, and then they just don't see it because it doesn't happen that often. So I'm going to move my general here. And if he, here's his colonel, if he doesn't move his colonel here, he's going to lose the, the uh, colonel due to the two square rule. So let's see what happens. I move down, he moved his marshal, and now it's over. He's going to lose his colonel. We're both 1-1, one, 2-2, one, two, two, and he knows he's cooked. Because he's gonna he's gonna be down uh, two uh, two colonels. So that was the, the the tricky move. So when I moved here, see I moved here one. He could have moved down one, and he would have been on the diagonal here. That you would be in instead of the diagonal in the columns, you'd be then the diagonal in the rows. So he had to move his colonel here. But it was so tempting to chase with the marshal, he probably panicked. And that allowed me to get him in the uh, two square rule. So now he's he knows he's he knows he's dead right now. He's thinking, oh no. He's like, man, this guy lottoed me, and now he gets me in a two square rule. And he loses another game. So, but that's how you can play with stats. Uh, if you know those stats. Uh, they can help you make really good decisions. And uh, I think you'll win a lot more games if you're more aggressive. I mean, if you watch the uh, championship game there with Loser Maker and Overlord, Overlord late in the game, he lottoed three different times. And the odds were, uh, were, were terrible because there were very few pieces left. But he wound up uh, risking it and he wound up winning. So I think if you become a little more aggressive, and if you know the stats, you can find these stats. I'm going to put a link below in the description. You can go to my blog, my first blog post. It has all the uh, allocation of all the pieces when the initial game set up, and you can see where where the bombs most likely are. So that can help you determine whether it's worth lottoing or not, because those stats are very very helpful, and they can help you win a lot of games. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Bye for now.